Hey, it's me, Joe Poliak, local San Francisco Bay Area real estate agent with Rise Homes. And I'm making a quick video with the San Francisco, San Mateo County real estate market update. I hope you like this video. If you do, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like, share, comment, all that good stuff really helps me, helps my YouTube channel, and uh, helps share this with more people so they can see these videos. Okay, so it's sort of an exciting week for macroeconomics in general because the Fed is meeting for two days and they conclude their two-day meeting. On Wednesday, most people expect that they're going to keep rates low, and obviously interest rates have a lot to do with what's been happening in the housing market. Frankly, it's been on fire. If the Fed signals that, it, they're probably not gonna signal that they're going to raise rates, but instead that they might raise rates several years down the line. That's what a lot of people are predicting. And so depending on what they say, the markets could react. Uh, mortgage rates might change just a little bit, but generally speaking, most experts predict that mortgage rates will still stay under the 4% mark, at least until the end of the year, which by historical standards is still very, very, very low. Now, in recent months and in the last year since COVID started essentially, I've seen clients get interest rates for 30 year fixed mortgages as low as 2.5% and um, variable interest mortgages uh, even lower than that. And so um, that has led and has helped to facilitate a very hot and active real estate market because interest rates being very low, uh, among the lowest in history, causes a lot more people to want to take advantage of that and buy while uh, the interest rates are low. So let's take a little bit of a deep dive into our local markets. We're gonna take a look at San Francisco, the city data, and uh, San Mateo County data. We're gonna look at condos and single family homes. First thing we're gonna take a look at is February 2021 data for San Mateo County for single family homes. And a couple of things that we are seeing generally is that the pressure on the market has not really given way at all and it still has been very, very hot. Homes are selling very quickly. Now, before the pandemic, it was very commonplace in the city and in San Mateo County to see homes selling for significantly above ask. And basically the benchmark where homes were selling for above asking price was around 10%. That was pretty standard, pretty much countywide, except for the very high priced markets of Atherton, Hillsboro, um, uh, Portola Valley, and then also maybe very secluded areas like Pescadero and maybe even parts of like Half Moon Bay and El Granada and along the coastal, uh, those coastal cities, you would see people listing homes closer to what their fair market value was. Whereas the rest of the peninsula pretty much, especially for single family homes, uh, the strategy was to list homes well below what they were expected to sell for, causing bidding wars, multiple offers, etc. That slowed down during the pandemic months and now that's picked back up again in full force let's take just a quick look here so san mateo county 413 new homes hit the market in february of 2021 let's just compare that to 2020 february 2020 so 395 new homes hit the market so not much of a change a little bit of an increase in the number of homes that hit the market um February 2021, inventory, homes available for sale at the end of the month, 426. Remember, this is single family home data. We'll dive into condos in a second. As far as our single family homes go, February 2020, we saw 392 homes were active for sale at the end of the month, February 2020. Now let's compare February 2021 sold data versus 2020 and so 246 homes sold in the month of February. No crazy differences, but February 2021 is clearly a more active month for real estate than February 2020, which had 219 total sales. Now days on market, the average days on market, this is the average number of days that a home is from the day that it's listed for sale publicly in the MLS until it's marked as pending or contingent. So when an offer is accepted, that is not the days from when close of escrow occurs. There's an additional oftentimes 10, 15, 25, 30 days, sometimes even 40 days or more um, between when an offer is accepted and when it closes escrow. This data point is counting the days that it's actively available for sale. So in February of 2020, that 
uh, average days on market was 32 days for the whole county. And for February 2021, it was 29 days. So a little bit quicker, uh, homes are selling a little bit faster. Let's compare fourth quarter. So the entire fourth quarter, the average was homes were selling in 26 days. Let's just kind of jump in February 2021 and see what are the most active and craziest markets. So Belmont at 26 days, that's okay. Um, 14 sales. Um, Brisbane, but it's only one sale, seven days on the market. Um, that was the average, so it's not enough data to really give us a meaningful statistic. But then look at Half Moon Bay. That's actually pretty unique. Usually Half Moon Bay homes uh, sit on the market a little bit longer, at least historically they have the coast. Tended to sometimes be a little bit less desirable just because it's a little bit further away. But hey, now that we are seeing work from home and shelter in place, people can go surf, walk to the beach, walk to the piers, get some seafood, relax, it's a great time, and they're not worried about the commute. I think that's what's caused a lot of activity moving out to the coast. There's a lot of people would always have liked to live there, but now with shelter uh, in place, they're able to do so and not worry about a commute. Uh, Foster City also, Mid-Peninsula market is also always very hot. Mid-Peninsula, North Peninsula, the city, um, generally the 280, 101 corridors, market's very hot, especially in that one to two to even three plus million price range nowadays, very hot, homes are selling very quickly. Millbrae, 17 days average. Pacifica, 10 days was the average days on market for the entire city of Pacifica with 14 sales. So Pacifica is red hot. Um, Daly City, 13 days, red hot. South San Francisco, 17 days, red hot on fire. San Bruno, 14 days, red hot on fire. 19 days for San Carlos. Burlingame, 36 days, a little bit slower. So what's that telling us? The lower price point areas with the median and average sales prices hovering between that 1 million to 1.5 million range, the real hot spot for a lot of home shoppers in the area is just absolutely on fire. And we are seeing 10, 20, 30 offers on most of these listings. Uh, recently, I had a couple of listings myself that went pending in less than a week over 10 offers and they were all listed in that price point a few of them went over the 1.5 price point closer to 2 million but some were um, still within that price range so average sales price and i'm going to show you a chart that's going to uh, take it away uh, for us as well average sales price 2.44 million let's compare that to the fourth quarter the average sales price was 2,093,000 Remember there's outliers and really expensive homes. If one $32 million home sold or two $30 million homes sold, then obviously that beefs up that average sales price number. And from February of 2020, we see an average sales price for the entire county of San Mateo of 2.139 million. Median sales price was 1575. Fourth quarter 2020, the median sales price was 168. The median sales price, San Mateo County, February 2021, was $1.9 million. That's the median sales price, almost $2 million for the entire county of San Mateo, which is just bananas, just ludicrous, crazy. And let's take a look at this chart right here that shows us the median sales price trend. Again, the median sales price generally tends to be the more seriously taken statistic because the median usually gives us a better indicator of where the market is at as opposed to uh, the mean, the average they call, but which is actually the mean, which takes the average of all of them, adds them all up and divides it by the number of how many sales there were. The reason why is because there'll always be outliers and sometimes there'll be, you know, three or four or $50 million sales in Portola Valley, Woodside, Menlo Park, Atherton. So that will skew the data quite heavily. But anyways, February 2021 for single family homes is a record month and it's just record after record well, we see that, you know, we hit a couple of records in uh, August is when I believe that that last record or July was when the last record was hit, went down a little bit towards the Q3, Q4, but then Q1 is just nuts. And usually our months of uh, December, January, February tend to be a little bit slower. So seeing such a hot and crazy market in February is causing prices to drive up. And now um, my feeling also is a couple of things that are adding to it is obviously the recent uh, rash of IPOs, a firm and Roblox coming out public. And um, I think there's a few other ones that I'm missing. Airbnb, what am I saying? And there are a lot of 
companies, their lockout periods have not ended yet, have not hit, but a lot of people expect that that money is gonna hit their bank account and they have money saved up. So they're saying, I'm gonna buy the property now and then my lockout period ends and I can cash out and get some money and remodel and do whatever I want. So I think that the rash of IPOs in our area, but also the expectation that the interest rates might start rising a little bit is causing people to be more urgent and more aggressive in their home buying. But the market has been crazy in the entire country. The market has been on fire in the entire country. And so if the market is on fire in the entire country, what is happening? Well, is it also stimulus money coming in? Is it also the Fed and the US government and uh, money being pumped into the system? You know, this is, you hear Bitcoin people and uh, gold people and, and all these kind of people talk about this, but I think that there is some value in understanding this is that money is being pumped into the system and we are seeing like almost like hyperinflation of asset prices. Although we're not seeing necessarily inflation in consumer goods, and we're actually seeing deflation in technology always, and things like that, but the CPI does not measure assets. And so, for example, if you wanted to buy a house five years ago, prices are up like 30, 40% maybe uh, for a house and stocks even more. What was the S&P 500 four or five years ago? I mean, I think it was down like 30% from where it was today. So asset prices continue to increase, and of course, with the craze and with everything going on with Bitcoin and Ethereum and, um, you know, I can't predict anything. You know, I know how to sell houses. I don't know uh, all of uh, the macroeconomic trends and what's going on. I can't predict things. I just believe in buying uh, real estate for the long term as long as it's giving you good passive income. I believe in buying uh, businesses for the long term as long as they're good businesses and you know there's a lot of ways to analyze that so i can't really predict things but it's seeming to me that w a lot of this is being fueled by money flow entering the system through the fed's actions low interest rates uh, money printing by the government stimulus checks etc cetera, etc cetera. so that is uh, single family homes and now we see condos we'll kind of jump to condos quickly but generally the condo market took a hit after COVID because people are saying well why am i going to buy a $1 million condo in San Mateo or in Soma of San Francisco when I can buy like an $850,000 house in Hayward, it's not that far away, I can work from home, I have a three bedroom, two bath house with maybe a swimming pool, a good backyard, pretty decent community, uh, what would be the point? Or I can move to Austin, Texas, or I can move to Oregon, or I can move to all these places where it's much more affordable, not live in a building that is close quarters with pricey HOAs of sometimes six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, while all the amenities have been closed down anyway, and you don't get to rub shoulders with your favorite uh, VC guy or Mark Benioff walking down the street and being able to interact because everybody's closed and everything is closed and you can't do anything. So I feel that that's what caused a uh, slowdown in the condo market, specifically in San Francisco, but really all over the peninsula and all over the San Francisco Bay Area in general. But I think, I feel, it looks like it's picking back up. And what is my evidence for that? Because you can't just say things without evidence. Common interest development, that uh, includes condos and townhomes. February 2021, 145 homes came on the market, uh, sorry, condos or townhomes came on the market in San Mateo County during the month of February 2021. 204 homes were left for sale at the end of the month and 106 sold. Let's compare that to February 2020 and wow, way less sold. That I can already tell you, almost 30% less sold. At the end of the month in inventory, what was that number? 204 still left in inventory, but there was only 124 left in inventory February 2020. So that means that supply is roughly, it looks to be like 70% more if I do my math correctly. So probably uh, 65, 70% more supply, but significantly more sales as well, 30% more sales, but not enough sales to eat up the supply. And new homes listed for sale, um, that was around the same, wasn't really changed. What was the average days on market? 39, always condos and townhomes sell a little bit uh, slower. They are not as hot, not as aggressive uh, buyers in general compared to single family homes. And over, I think, long periods of time, they don't go up in value as much. Now, that's not always the case everywhere, but just kind of a general rule. 
So let's take a look at 36 average days on market. So homes, condos are selling for a little bit, uh, they're selling a little bit quicker than they were in February pre-pandemic last year, 33 days for fourth quarter 2020. So generally the condo market hasn't slowed down that much as far as days on market, but there's a, a much more supply. Now, uh, average sales price, let's start with fourth quarter since that's what we're looking at, 962 thousand dollars was the average sales price for the fourth quarter of 2020 and february 2020 it was 974 thousand was the average sales price and 942 thousand uh february 2021 so no major changes it's covering around the same just it looks like there's just a lot more supply more homes are hitting the market and the demand just hasn't been able to recapture that supply that's i think the major issue with the condo market but a, a really hot condo that's very nicely remodeled and really stands out from all the other ones or townhome that feels like a single family that really stands out from other ones um, those are hot and will still sell very quickly it's just kind of more of the condos and townhomes that may be a little bit more dated and they're a little bit more dated community in general uh, the units are a little bit more dated um, older not necessarily fixed up so really the uh, difference is we sold a townhome in fourth quarter of 2020 and that was very very hot and it sold in a week and that was it was completely remodeled so um, it had its own separate entrance and had a beautiful patio and it was pretty busy actually uh, while we had it on the market. Really that ultimately that's going to be the uh, game changer. February 2021 median price per square foot 775, uh, 779 in the fourth quarter and then 830 in uh, February 2020. So prices are still down from a year ago today when I would say that they may have been in their peak or close to it. Let's take a look. Was it? Yeah right around this time was probably a peak in the market was or close to it was that february to april time frame march april and that's when the pandemic just hit and that's when people made offers in the february march time frame closed escrow in april and so then we start seeing a drop and a slowly de a slow decline and now a picking back up again so which is good homes were selling for three percent over asking and now they are in fourth quarter they were at asking and now they're selling for just a tad bit one percent over asking so okay i think we're good with san mateo county if you have any questions about that it's a little bit of a different market well it's definitely a much different market than san francisco in the sense that it is a lot more suburban people come here for the better weather generally once you get south of san bruno san bruno is kind of on that cusp of where the fog line really hits over the cliff there over the pacifica area generally um people move here for the weather more parking um the homeless issue that you know is really taken over san francisco um to you know keep that in a very politically correct way it's not nearly as bad here the schools are better generally they the public schools have higher ratings in the mid peninsula and these areas and a lot of folks um i think just you know kind of grew tired of you know you go to the city for the restaurants for the nightlife for the community for the feel and when that's all gone it's you know you kind of think and you say like why would i um be here now i was born and raised in the city and it's a very nostalgic place for me and i just love it you know i love going back there and everything and my wife um, works in menlo park and was born and raised in san mateo belmont area and so that's why we live here now i can see both worlds and see why uh, certain people would like to live in certain places but what we've been seeing is not necessarily an exodus because people are moving out of the city but then other people who have been renting or people who um, you know already own a house or people who had a condo before are buying up the houses that other people are leaving so really I'm not seeing any kind of um, mass exodus as people discuss but let's take a look at that so the San Francisco Association of Realtors releases these um, data for us and uh, I'm a member of both San Francisco Association of Realtors because I do a good amount of business there and also San Mateo County Association of Realtors because I do a lot of business there and I live there that's why I get data from both of these sources so they give us a little bit of commentary and uh, basically hey the commentary is that interest rates have been very very low and they've bumped up a little bit over the last month or so so now your 30-year fixed mortgage may be uh, 3% or 3.25 but it was 2.5 or 2.75 so um, it's it's up a little bit but not that much and generally that's what's been causing things so monthly snapshot is uh one year change february 2020 
to February 2021, prices have increased for single family homes. Medium price for condos are down a little bit year over year. So single family overview for San Francisco. And this does a good job for us of in one chart, putting the comparing February 2020 with February 2021, year to date, February 2020 and year to date, February 2021. Now, new listings that hit the market down way down actually new listings that hit that's kind of surprising not sure what could be causing that uh that a lot less people are putting their homes on the market but 25 percent between uh one year over the next and year to date 20 percent. that's pretty massive pending sales um that's up significantly so the number of new homes hitting the market is down the number of homes that are pending are up significantly again we're seeing a crazy february what is causing such crazy february once again low interest rates that people expect that might come up a little bit and they're rushing in how about ipos and people knowing that like hey i was worth you know one or two million and now i'm worth three or four or five you know or i was you know i didn't have much savings or, or maybe a couple of hundred thousand in stocks and now I have 1.5 so that's prevalent and that's happening regularly so I think that that's increasing in the pending sales so remember the difference between pending sales versus sold listings so home is actively for sale listed for sale and then an offer is accepted many times within a week or two max and then once the offer is accepted and it's pending that means it's in escrow that means it's in contract all of those things basically just mean the same thing is that an offer has been accepted and now it's going through the time period where they're um, either the underwriters are working on somebody's loan or they're doing additional inspections or there's an appraisal being done or one of those things until close of escrow until it's actually recorded at the county level or the city level in the city of, uh, and county of San Francisco that hey, there's a new owner here. So that's usually what it takes. Usually that timeline is about 30 days. So just understand that that's this, these sold listings numbers are from listings that, you know, accepted offers maybe in December or January, whereas the pending sales could have happened. Many homes are accepting offers after being on the market for one day, two days, three days. They uh, hit the market and then people just rush in and they get a strong preemptive offer. Most of the time, most agents will wait until an offer due date or give it at least like a week on the market to make sure everybody had time to see the property. But now showings are getting just so swamped and so like locked in so quickly that um, it's hard to get your buyer in before an offer is accepted sometimes for some homes. Okay, so median price jumped up a little bit, 1.7 year over year, and then a very similar, but actually a little bit more, the year to date was 1.56. So the median sales price for single family homes in San Francisco is 1.7. But keep in mind, that's below San Mateo County median sales price so a lot of people will uh, assume always that the city is the most expensive but clearly it is less than san mateo county and that is just wild right and i don't even want to talk about um danville and the east bay and what's been happening there and it's like you know danville and walnut creek and these areas with good school districts homes were selling for you know one 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 two one three with a yard and a ten thousand square foot lot and a swimming pool and the house is nice and it's big and it's 2300 now those are selling for one five one six one seven if not more than that and that's san francisco san mateo county prices what we're seeing really is that you know the san francisco market is still strong and still hot and still growing but the other surrounding areas are just growing at an unprecedented, insane level. Average sales price though, because you do got a lot of those outliers in San Francisco, 2.33. Um, now, I'm not sure why these two numbers are different because the year to date, well, I guess it's because it's average. It takes all of it. That's understandable. Days on market, 31, 34. Um, that is a little surprising. I actually thought it'd be a little bit quicker, but that's still, keep in mind, that's still blazing speed. I believe the national average in fact, let me Google, give me one second. Um, national average days on market real estate. Homes across the US are selling faster in 2020 than years past. In 2020, homes spent an average of just 25 days on the market for going under contract, down from 30 days, requiring an additional 45 days to close escrow. Therefore, the average time it takes to sell a house is 55. Oh, that's the average time it takes to sell a house, including the escrow period. Okay, that makes sense. That's crazy. The whole country 
is selling quicker than San Francisco now. Cool, so uh, average list price received, we're still seeing homes are selling seven, eight percent above asking price on average. Now, in some neighborhoods, you have people who list the properties and, you, and that's just the way that it goes, like in the Sunset, in Bernal, in all over the city, different neighborhoods, in Noe, whatever. You list a house, you know, in the Sunset and Parkside, you list it for a million, 198 and it's sold for 1.736 you know that's just kind of standard operating procedure some people don't do that and they list it for around what it's worth or it goes below asking it's just like you know it's it's tough market for buyers if you're not working for somebody who is in the pulse of the market working hard showing you the data helping to educate you and is taking the additional time and steps that it takes to really get you prepared and ready for how you're gonna have to compete and what the actual market values are okay month supply and two it's okay it's not uh too crazy so let's jump now to condos so new listings that hit the market down okay less homes hitting the market pending sales up significantly from uh 208 last year to 316 um, same goes for year to date numbers sold listings up 35.2 and 35.2% um, and 52.5% for year to date so again new listings down pending sales and closed sales just a lot more condos are selling but here's the thing about it is that the median price is down from 1.275 to 1.2 217 not a lot but it's still down whereas the rest of the country and the rest of the Bay Area and the rest of all these areas for single-family homes are up significantly except obviously in the city not significantly as much as it is in other surrounding areas same thing year to date average sales price down average sales price down both all around days on market this is really the best illustration of what's happened to the condo uh, townhome market in the city TIC market in the city because I believe this includes TIC correct 61 days on market is the average up significantly from 29 so it's doubled 67 from 43 for year to date I mean there's still a glut of inventory of people who sold their place and moved to another neighborhood moved to the East Bay moved to the Peninsula moved to the North Bay moved to the South Bay moved to Austin Texas moved to Sacramento moved to all these other areas where you can buy a $450,000 brand new house for half the price that you're selling your condo in Soma. You know, it is what it is. I, uh, you know, I see that reversing, like my a little tidbit here. I see that coming back. The vaccine, you know, it's gonna be more prevalent. Things are opening back up. The restaurants are opening back up. Indoor seating is opening back up. Games and uh, parties and everything. Is it gonna be the roaring 20s again? I think so. I think it's like people are gonna be party and events and this, and it's gonna happen, I think, within I mean I'm not a scientist I don't know but I think like hey is it sound like if I have a vaccine I'm pretty much you know good to go and go out there and do what I want to do I think that that's how it works I don't know again I'm not an expert in that I would ask people I would wait for you know I work with a lot of people in the medical field and I always talk to them what's going on tell me about this my feeling is that we'll be back to celebrating things and being back together and it's like then people are gonna want to be back in the city and you know a single-family home just doesn't exist in Mission Bay you know, uh, maybe in Doc Patch it does, but to go catch the Warriors and go watch the Giants uh, on the same day sometimes, you know, probably not the, necessarily the same day. That would be a crazy traffic day. But these things are coming back and people are going to want to be doing these. So all that's going to be available is condos and, and uh, condos and TICs. And so they're going to come back, in my opinion. And so I think this, if you are, have ever been considering buying a condo, and, and that's where you see yourself living in a condo or a TIC and that's what you've been looking for right now is the time to buy I really do not think it could be a better time than right now because as you see prices are down this is like the only piece of real estate in the world where prices are down you know maybe not exactly everywhere in the world but so that's where we're at and uh, the rest of this stuff is charged if you want this information uh, and you want this data feel free to ping me and I'll get this over to you and I'll be happy to share it with you and go over this data in more detail. Again, thanks so much. My name is Joe Poliak, local San Francisco Bay Area real estate agent with Rise Homes. And I make these videos for people like you who are thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, comment, share. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call back. My number is 415-595. 2647. You can also text me there or email me at joe at homesbyrise.com. Thanks so much. Look forward to chatting with you soon.